In this video, we're going to review the software update compliance reports and how to install them. When you subscribe to our SCUP catalog, you'll receive an email that contains your catalog information as well as the report installer. Once you've downloaded the report installer, you're going to run it with a user account that has permissions for reports within your Configuration Manager site. This will allow us the ability to upload these reports. The installer is going to prompt you for your Configuration Manager site code. It's going to prompt you for your Configuration Manager reporting services point server name. So this is going to be your SQL Server running your SQL reporting services. Optionally, you can change the folder that we're going to create and upload the reports to. If you're using a custom uh, virtual directory for your report manager or report web service, you can change the, these here. In most instances, you're probably going to leave those defaults. If you need to review your, your virtual directories, you can open Reporting Services Configuration Manager. And you can review the Report Manager URL. We can see it's default. In the Web Service URL, we can see it's also default in this environment. After you've verified the information, you can click Start Report Install. This is going to copy and extract the reports. It's going to go through each report and change the server name for your server. And it's going to change the data source for your Configuration Manager data source to connect back to your database. This process can take about a minute or two, so we'll pause the video while this completes. Okay, The process is just about complete. It's going to open a web browser that's going to open the directory that it uploaded the reports to automatically when it's done. We can see that we have uh, 13 different reports here. We have four reports that are uh, related to the update dashboard. These are all going to be very similar. The only differences between the first two reports are going to be these reports will show us all the updates in the environment, but it gives us the ability to show it for all devices. That's going to be the first report or the second report we can uh, filter all the updates by a specific collection. So if you were using collections and you were filtering out machines that maybe you don't want to report compliance on, you could choose the second report and then filter it by a collection. Um, the, the third and fourth update dashboard report only shows third-party updates and it's got the same options where we can show all devices or if you wanted to filter the data for the third-party updates, you could choose the by collection report. As far as the charts and graph goes between these four dashboard reports, they're all going to be the same. You do have the ability to change the default categories. So by default, we're going to show critical security update rollups and updates. If you had any additional classifications that you wanted to include here, you could simply uh, drop down on the report name and go to manage. This will give you the option to change the default parameters and we could simply type in the additional um, categories that you may want to have selected by default. The first section is the assets section. This will show us uh, how many workstations and servers we have in the environment. We break this up by operating system as well as by managed and unmanaged. We consider a device managed if it's scanned for software updates within the last 14 days. The next section is the software update information. This breaks down into two different charts. We can break it down by workstations and by servers. Uh, this will break down for the last 12 months of updates and give you a percentage of the compliance rate for those updates. For each month, we're going to see a count a number uh, under the month. This is going to be how many updates for that month are either installed or required by either the workstations or the servers in your environment. The compliance rate is how many of those 240 updates that are either uh, required or installed are installed. So we can see that for June 2016, of the 240 updates for that month, we're at 69% compliance. We can then click into the graph and it's going to break down all the updates within this month and it's going to show us how many are required and it's also going to show us how many are installed. Within the update, um, we can also break down and it's, we can drill down into that specific update. 
uh, and that will actually link to one of the native reports and then you can even drill down into the update and see what machines are required and what machines have it installed. Okay. And this is going to be very similar for servers. The graphs are going to be the same. Uh, we can click on the June updates, either the bar graph or you can click on the percentage number and that will break us into the updates for that specific month and show us how many are required and how many are installed for all the updates that were released within that month. Okay. The next uh, section of the report is compliance. We also break these up into charts based on workstations and by servers. So the overall compliance, that will tell us how many devices are 100% compliant for all updates. So in our environment, we can see we have four Windows 10 machines, two Windows 7 machines, and two Windows 8.1 machines. We can see that uh, none of these machines are 100% compliant with all the updates in the environment. If we click on the percentage or the graph, if you did have a graph, um, that will show you which of these devices. So we should see all four of these here have at least one update required because we're not compliant. So we can see these are the four Windows 10 devices in the environment. We can see that none of them have, uh, they all have at least one or more updates that are required. So that's why we have our 0% compliance rate here. For Windows 7, we could break into that. We're going to see similar information here. We'll see the two Windows 7 machines, and uh, both of these should have at least one update required. The next chart is Workstation's missing software updates. This allows us to filter in uh, and see devices that are missing a specific range of updates. So we can see updates that uh, are machines that have 1 to 10 updates, 11 through 25, 26 through 50, or greater than 50 updates that are required. So if we click the 1 to 10 updates, this will show us any devices um, that are workstations that have between 1 and 10 updates that are needed. In this environment, it also looks like we have some that have between 11 and uh, 25. So we should see uh, these five machines here, and we can see the number of required updates. We can also break down into the machine, and this will filter in for the update compliance, one of the native reports that will show us how many updates are required for this specific device. And we can filter that here. Um, the next chart is going to show us how many updates or how many devices are 100% compliant for updates within a specific month range. We also break this up by operating system for Windows 7, 8.1, and Windows 10. We can see that, um, for example, the May updates, we can see that for Windows 10 devices, we're at 50% compliance. So that means half of our Windows 10 machines are 100% compliance for these updates this month. If we click into this, it's going to show us the updates that are required and how many devices they're needed on. Uh, for the June, we can see that none of our workstation class OSs are compliant with all the updates for that month. The next chart is going to show us workstations missing at least one update within a, a, a month range as well. We also break this down by operating system. So we can see that for May, we have two Windows 8.1 machines that have at least one update that's required. This will break us down into the computer name and show us the number of updates that are required. For June, we can see we have four Windows 10 machines that have at least one update needed for that month and then we'll list the machines here. The server section is going to be essentially the same charts and data. Um, it's just going to be analyzing it based on server operating systems. So we won't review that.
this is the third party update dashboard so the charts and everything is going to be essentially the same uh, the only difference is that when we review all the data it's only going to show as updates that are third party updates so anything Microsoft would be filtered out so this would be uh, a good scenario maybe if you just want to see third party vendor updates Okay, the third uh, report, we'll open that here. This will allow us to choose a collection and a specific software update group. And this will show you any devices that are not compliant with updates within that group. So for this update group I just chose, we can see that we're 100% compliant. So let's try this workstation update group. like we're compliant on that group as well. Um, this one should have some machines that need these updates. Okay, so we can see that for this update group we do have devices that do need some updates within it. Uh, we break it down by the severity of critical, important, moderate, low, or none. And then for these different classifications it will also show you whether the update that's required by each device is greater than 30 days or less than 30 days since it was released. In our case, this is the, just a definition update group. So if we drill into the machine, we, we're just going to see our one update here that's missing. Um, so we can see that this update is missing on this device. You have the URL you can click for the release notes uh, and just different metadata about this update. So this can be good for really drilling into specific devices to understand what updates they're missing within a specific update group. The installed application report, this allows you to select any of the applications within our catalog and review how many insta installs you have and how many versions you have of it. So for Java 8, let's say we wanted to run a report to see how many instances of Java 8 we have in the environment. In our case, we can see we have two different installs. We have the 32-bit version and the 64-bit version. For the 32-bit, we have seven machines that have it and we have three machines with the 64-bit version. We can drill into each of these based on the display name and see how many machines have this specific application installed and get the device names for those. We can also filter by the display version. So we could say show me any that have this application in this specific version installed and list all the computers that have that as well. And that is all the main level reports. There's some additional reports here, but these are all sub reports. So when you click a link within the dashboard or any of the other reports that we showed, these would just link to these sub reports. So we won't be reviewing those in this demo.